dear Heavenly Father, thank you for what you always do for us. Thank you because we always know that you are with us. Because you speak to us, and we pray today again, Lord, that you speak to us. Amen. We want to stand and wait for your spirit to lead us, speak by mm. us, be led by your spirit, so that those things that we're going to say will be beneficial to every single one that is going to listen to this. Mm. Be beneficial to us as well. Father, we hand over everything to you, and we trust that you will cause each and every one of us to speak your true word and nothing mm. else. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Hello, everyone. Hello, uh, our two elders, Brother Paul and Sister Peace. We started a conversation not just last week. We've been on this topic of uh, how to choose a church. It's going to about eight weeks now. But this discussion took a new direction last week when we began to test with First um, John chapter four. Uh, so today again, we will continue in that light. Last week we tested using First John chapter four verses one to eight. We tested video of uh, David Oedipo and uh, we tested the mission statement of um, Desta Christian Center. Today we will look at the video, or depends. We might still do some comment on the previous videos, but I have two videos lined up for today. Or one video lineup for today, one from Arome Osai. And the second thing we want to test is the mission statement of the living faith. We want to read that statement and we want to compare those statements with the word of God. And I'm glad, sir, and ma, that people are already testing. I can see the comment. People are already testing. They are they have gotten the tools. And this is how we should behave as be as be real. Or we all should be bereaved. We, we all should know how to use the word of God to, to test whatever is out there. And isn't that the meaning of discernment? Discernment is the ability to use God's truth to knock out Satan's lies. That's what we have in Ephesians and Hebrews, Hebrews 5, 3, and 5, 12 to 14. Those who have matured who know how by who know how to design between right. And that's discernment. What we are teaching here is to put it in the hands of people how to design truth from lies. Maybe we should share that scripture again, sir. Let's read it again. On this, let's put it on the screen. First John chapter four, verses wow. one to to eight. Let's have it on the screen. Because that we're going to be using it for a long time. Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits whether they are of God. Because many false prophets are gone out into the world. Hereby know ye the Spirit of God. Every spirit that professes that confesses that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is of God. And every spirit that confesses not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God. And this is the spirit of Antichrist. Whereof ye have heard that it should come, and even now already is it in the world. Ye of God, little children, I have overcome them. Because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. They have the world. They are for speak they of the world, and the world hears them. We are of God. He that knows God hears us. He that is not of God hears not. Okay. He that loves not knows not God, for God is love. Thank you so much. Sir. Um, let's still leave the screen on. You know, last week we said based on these um, scriptures, we John gave us five key tests with which we should test for our true spirit. One was that teaching or doctrine point to Christ. Two, does it oppose worthiness? Worthiness. Three, does it point to scriptures? Four, does it point to the truth? And five, does it lead to love to God? And love to God's people. I want to ask a question before we even watch a video based on this first John chapter 4. Baba, look at we, 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 you read verses 1. It says, Be, Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirit whether they are of God. He's talking about do not believe spirit and try spirit because many false prophets 
Did you notice what I noticed then? We are testing spirit, but he's referring to false prophets. He's teaching us to try spirits. However, he's putting our attention on false prophets. Does that imply that the spirit behind false prophets is demonic or the spirit behind false prophets is the unholy Holy Spirit? Let's discuss on that point. So we will know the gravity of what we are discussing. So for, with, for, for every first prophet you see, there is a wrong spirit behind. That is a powerful word and it has weight. Let's discuss that, then we watch a video. That will make people to see the seriousness of what we are discussing. I, I think, I think if, if you don't mind, I think one of the first thing to do is to find out who a prophet is. Who actually is a prophet? <clears throat> yes. A prophet is somebody who steps forward to say that what he is going to tell you or what he has told you is from God. That's basically that's basically the definition of a prophet. Whether 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 that thing is something that is that is going to happen immediately or is going to happen sometime later in the future, because every every word from God has consequences. If there's no word from God that does not have consequences. So this particular first one that you're asking us to pay attention to, everybody that comes to this video must pay attention to it. <laughs> that of a truth, the writer started by saying, by talking of spirit, that we, we should try the spirit. He now settled it down on prophets. The issue is that the moment you open your mouth to say you are speaking on behalf of God, you are actually a prophet. Because you are declaring what God said. If, if therefore God never said anything to you, you are you are not, you are a false prophet. <laughs> that is that is what you have in First John chapter four verse one. Every one of us that is gathered here is a prophet or prophetess. Everyone that opens his mouth to speak anything about God is declaring something that God said about his universe, hmm. either in the past. <clears throat> in the future or in the present. A prophet is somebody who declares the mind of God. That is, that is who a prophet is. Because every declaration, every, every declaration about the mind of God is consequential. There's none of, there's none of them that is, that is useless. God does not joke. He doesn't joke so, with anybody. So, sir, in effect, uh, 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 can I can I say what you are saying is that if I stand up and say to the congregation that I decree this one and declare that one because uh, that this one will happen, I'm standing to speak the word of God. Is that what? Oh you yes. Say? Oh yes. So if, uh, if, except, if, except you, in fact, the thing is that the moment you stand up. And you open your mouth to say anything. You are you are presenting yourself as God's mouthpiece. Hmm. In the book of uh, I think it's First Peter, the Bible says that everyone that must speak must speak as oracle of God. Everyone must speak as oracle so, of God. I'm going to hold you by your word, sir. God at that moment is making use of your tongue to speak to people or to somebody. So hold you are hold actually hold a prophet hold one on. way or the other. If what you are saying, if what you are saying does not align with what we have written on the pages of the Bible. The first prophet. The first prophet. I'm going to hold you by that word. So uh, go on by John. Paul, well, you hold on, hold on for me a little bit because uh, I think uh, my brother is uh, saying something that uh, so 
I pick any Bible that passage. I pick anyone. And I start wrong many with it. Start saying something that is not uh, what the Bible says or what, or what it meant. I'm a false prophet. Oh, you are, sir. Okay. You are, sir. Now, Paul, go ahead. <laughs> every, every, every syllable that, you, that comes out of your mouth or out of the mouth of any human being mm. that relates to God mm. must align perfectly with what you have on the pages of the Bible. Okay. I'm, we're going to do a test. If I'm an apostle, how about if I'm an apostle? We are going to when, do a test. Whatever you, whatever you, you like, you, you can call yourself. <laughs> okay, so, okay. Wait, let me hold the two of you now. You, 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 we open this verses one that says, "Do not test every, do not believe every spirit, but try every spirit whether they are of God." So Baba said, the, "The definition of a prophet is a mouth speak, a mouthpiece of God, someone who speak on behalf of God." In other words, whatever he says cannot contradict this word. I want to share. I hope this computer can share in my screen. I think this one will share. You can see the Google, see. Google stuff, right? Google. Yes, yes. God gave his servant Bishop David. Uh -huh. Okay, now, Baba said, a prophet is a mouthpiece of God who speaks on behalf of God. Now, what do texts? First John chapter 4, verses 1 to 8. We want to use that text, that scripture, to test this mouthpiece because this is a prophet. God gave his servant Bishop David Oedipo this mandate. After an 18 hour visionary encounter, mm -hmm. God told him the hour has come to liberate the world from all oppressions of the devil through the preaching of the word of faith. And I am sending you to undertake this task. This is about peace. This is a prophet. I want to use 1 John chapter 4, verses 1 to 8 to test the veracity of this statement. Go ahead, brothers and sisters. I, I, I think I will see, I will still go to that uh, verse one of, uh, uh, of uh, the, the, the verse one there. The first is test or spirit. The scripture wouldn't have been saying that if the spirit, if he, uh, I mean, because he knows that the spirit that speak through us must be the Holy Spirit. Must be the one that is speaking the word of God because the Bible told us straight away that those that are led by the Spirit of God, they are children of God. So the Spirit of God needs to lead anybody before it says anything. So if you are saying something that is contrary to the scripture, you're not a child of God, you're not you are a false prophet. That's what you have gotten from verse one. So uh, let me stop there because I just want to make sure that that verse one, we clear it up and then we can go ahead and then look at this. So anybody can start with this. So the five tests, does it point to the truth about Christ? Does it oppose what you want? Does it uphold scriptures? Does it uphold the truth? Does it lead to love to God and love to men? According to First John chapter 4, verses okay. 1 to Right. Thank you, sir. Thank you, uh, the, the coordinator. The hour, the, the, this, this was what God, supposedly, this was what a spirit, um, this was what a spirit told uh, Mr. David Doyedepo after his 18-hour visionary encounter. We should listen, we should read exactly what that spirit said. <laughs> the spirit supposedly said the hour had come to liberate the world from all oppressions of the devil. I, 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 want, I, I just want us to stay there. Yeah. Okay. Now, please, for the sake of people who will be listening to us or watching this, that is again the declaration in the book of Revelation, that the world will not be liberated from the work of the enemy, from the work of the devil, until Christ steps into this planet again. 
that is not going to happen. What you have, what you have in the book of Revelation, which you can check, is woe unto you, you dwellers on the earth and on the sea. For the devil mm -hmm. has come to you with the great wrath. Because he knows that his time, that his time is mm -hmm. short. The wrath of the devil, the wrath of the devil, continues to wrath. You see, what we are having here, what we are having here is a spirit that said things that are contrary to what you have on, on, on the pages of the Bible in the book of Revelation. What, what, what this spirit supposedly told David was that he was now going to become the savior. This spirit, supposedly, <laughs> that is what it told him in Bible language, that the, the, the Lord Jesus Christ will no longer be necessary to step into the, into the, into the earth physically again. The second coming is no longer necessary. From now onward, you are the savior. You can, again, ask the question whether in actual fact, whether in actual fact, he has been able Revelation to- Revelation 12. Whether in actual fact, he has been able to deliver on his so-called mandate. That, you can ask that question. Whether is the spirit that told him that he was going to be the liberator of, of uh, humanity, or maybe even the, the black part of humanity, Africans, according to, uh, to him, whether that, that, whether that assignment has now, been, uh, has now been executed, whether, whether we can now open our eyes and say of a truth, in the last 35, 40 years, we have been all liberated from the oppression of the devil. If that is the case, the video will not, be, will not be praying every day. Every, day. every, day. every time, every time he, he and his group meet, they are always giving command to the devil to cease oppressing them, to cease killing them, to cease stealing their happiness, their property, their money, their health, and their relatives. Then, of course, uh, you will see the other thing that he said, that uh, this thing was going to be done through the preaching of the word of faith. Word of faith. <laughs> that, that let me be very kind, let me be very clear, clear to everybody. That spirit, are you with me? Was saying things that if you don't know the Bible, if you are not a child of God, you can easily be swept off your feet. But if you are a child of God, that spirit, in in some sense, by the by the by the Holy Spirit of God, was giving enough codes and information for any child of God to know that that spirit is not from God. This particular spirit will do the liberation of the world through the preaching of word of faith, not, not through the preaching of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Mm. Mm. That, is, that is what I'm seeing before mm. me. That this that spirit was ready to consign the, 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 the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ into because what was needed to be preached was no longer the gospel. What you have, what you have in the book of Romans, chapter one, verse sixteen and verse seventeen, that the gospel is the power of God to salvation to everyone that believes. That, that, that spirit says no. Salvation, defined by the spirit of God, is not the issue, mm. and it's not even necessary. What is necessary is to be liberated by a word of faith. The issue, the issue is that most people have been blinded to think that they can substitute word of faith for the gospel. 
that, 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 that they are synonymous, they are synonyms of one another. They only need to pay a little attention for their own sake to realize that the word of faith is not the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. <clears throat> because the word of faith is word of command. From now onward, Mr. Edepo will be trusting about the, the universe, about the earth, giving command by the use of his own mouth to effect, as he said, as 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 is being told, to effect liberation of the world. <clears throat> in order to stop the oppression of the enemy. <clears throat> that is the word of faith. This word of faith has failed him. Because, <laughs> because when the devil came to snatch his wife, the word of faith could not do anything. His wife had to be taken to for surgery in America. His, his, his ability to open his mouth and say, I command you, or I command this, or I I declare this or I decree this. The head of his wife will not accept such. And the same thing for his own head, too. <laughs> so, no. The, 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 the five or six uh, tests that our coordinator uh, had, had actually uh, illustrated, that had brought forward. On from first John chapter four, verse one to verse eight, what you have on the uh, what you have in the paragraph before you failed everyone. It's not about the Lord Jesus Christ. It's not about the true God. It's not about the truth of God. It does not align with the Bible. It does not have anything to do with love. Okay, sir. Before you come, you are going to come next. I want to alight. Can you see my screen, please? Where am I lighting? Yes, the yes. I want to the word from all the oppression of the devil through the preaching of the word of faith. And is that spirit is sending our bishop. First John 3 8. He that committed sin is of the devil, for the devil sinned from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. Who will destroy the work of the devil? The son of Christ. man. So this man failed the truth about Christ. Yeah, okay. Yeah, well, That's thank, you for, thank, thank you for taking the word out of my mouth. But, oh, okay. Yeah, that, 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 because uh, does he point to Christ? No. That thing was pointing to himself. That's the, that's, that's the first truth that everybody needs to understand. That... I mean, the, the Bible in Hebrews 1, 1, told, Hebrews 1, 2 told us that the final word has been spoken by God. So God is not going to contradict his word in any, any, any form. So if anybody now said the hour has come, you know, you know who the hour, uh, I mean, in the Bible, when they said the hour has come, who said that really? It's for Christ who said it. It was Christ who said, the hour has come. So, another spirit. Remember, they need to understand what Galatians 1 says. Because this guy is actually preaching another gospel. Because as far as he's concerned, God is sending in another Messiah. The first Messiah must have failed woefully. And I think I'm only, I'm only echoing what our brother said. And that's, you see, any, any attempt, because the Bible says, if you love me, Christ says, if you love me, you will obey my command. It's not obeying anybody's command. And when you say word of faith, what does that mean? All right, sir. Yeah. Our, our brothers clearly this. I mean, in their, in, in their worldview, <laughs> is to be able to speak as God, to be able to command, you know, I'm not going to I'm not going to say that is to be God to be able to declare that's the meaning. So anybody who's in the word of faith, he can say something and that thing will happen. That's exactly what he said. It doesn't matter whether God commanded him, it doesn't matter, but he can originate things from his mouth, from, from his heart, and then say it straight. 
But when he is now saying that the hour, see, the moment I, I had the hour has come, what came into my head is that who said this in the scripture? That was that was Jesus, the Messiah. He said the hour had come. And when that hour had come, for what? To liberate the world from all the oppressions of the devil. Um, what did the, the devil do? He wants to lift himself higher above. This is this is pure, pure evil. He has come to liberate the world. He said, God told him, We cannot say this, this is not from God. We can say it because God won't repeat himself, he won't give his son a mandate, and then. Our brother just read first uh first John 3. He can give his son a mandate and then say, Oh man, you have failed. I'm going to give it to another servant of mine. <laughs> this is this is what he's saying. Even even when we look at uh, uh, John 10 10, the Christ was saying that all came before me, they were robbers, they were that they have come to steal, to, uh, to kill, and to destroy. But I have come to give you life. So what liberation does he want to give again, apart from the one that Jesus Christ gave? So it doesn't point to Christ. It's not pointing to any truth. In fact, that spirit that came to him is a spirit, a spirit of lie. And just to hype himself, after an 18-hour Missionary encounter. <laughs> what does that mean? Who was he encountering? Surely it's not the God who made the universe, not the Spirit of God. Thank you. All right, where are Paul? Um, praise the Lord. Uh, you know, I was just looking at the uh, uh, looking at that mandate. And with what everybody has said, it's very clear that uh, whatever spirit that uh, Ishobu Yidiku encounter has nothing to do with Christ. Uh, he's been given a mandate that uh, is saying that what Jesus has done is not enough. Mm. Mm. And, you know, and the standard of the Bible, when you take a look at, uh, you know, even after Jesus has passed, everyone he called, he called them, and they go out to proclaim his gospel, mm. not something else, not something else again. Remember, out of the Apostle chapter 10, when Peter was sent to Cornelius, he got there, he said, what he did there to do is to proclaim Christ. He said in verse 38, he said how God anointed Jesus Christ of Nazareth. He did not say how God anointed him. He did not say God called him to come and preach something else different. He said, how God anointed Jesus Christ of Nazareth with holy ghost and power, and he went about, you know, doing good and freeing all those who are oppressed of the devil. Mm. I look at this mandate, I, don't, I can't see anything about Christ in this place. Having said that, when we take a look at the great commission that Jesus gave before his, his passing, that's in Matthew 28, from verse 18. What is it that Jesus said? I, you know, we, we can read from, you know, from there, Matthew 28, uh, from verse 18. You see, in the Great Commission, the Great Commission is about Christ preaching the good news, not something else. And and Jesus came and spoke to them, this Matthew 28 from verse 18. 
And Jesus came and spoke to them, saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. All authority is in Christ Jesus. That mandate did not mention Christ. It did not mention anything about anything about observing what Christ said we should observe. He's talking about people not being liberated and being delivered. So invariably what Bishop Oedepo is saying is that what Christ has done is not enough. You know, as uh, the two, our two elders have already said, that what Christ has done is not enough to liberate people. Now God has given him a special mandate. And you see, the danger of this thing is that he is now undermining the authority of Jesus Christ to elevate himself. And that's the reason why in that mandate you can't even see anything about what, you know, what Jesus Christ said concerning himself in that mandate. Anybody can have any vision. If you, if you, if you, if you, if, if you are in a place and you, 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 you are so focused at some point, you begin to, you know, to, to have a, a, all kind of a brain waves. If you deprive yourself of food and uh, and uh, and uh, social interaction, definitely so de it's a, de a demonic entity will interact with you. So it's not everything that is in that Monday has nothing to do with Christ. It's all about him. It's all about what he feel he needs to do. Or whatever spirit that he interacted with him, he needs to do. It's about making himself important. Every prophet from Genesis to Revelation point to Christ. Even the last prophet of the old dispensation, John the Baptist, that Jesus said is the greatest of all prophets of the you know of the old dispensation before his coming. What was his mission? He came to point to Christ. He came to preach repentance. That mandate is not talking about repentance of sin. The greatest bondage any man, every man is under today is the bondage of sin. He's not talking about repentance of sin. He's not talking about obedience unto, unto Christ. He's not, he's just talking about what are you liberating people from? And this is an aside. I had him, you know, say severally and you in interaction and you know that God has come, called him to make people rich. Where is that in the mandate of, uh, in the Great Commission? So everything about this mandate is not pointing anybody to Christ. And anybody who loves himself, who is serious about his salvation, will run away from such gathering. I understand the fact that in this place you cannot meet Christ. If you meet any Christ, it will be the Christ of Bishop Boyedipo, and that's an antichrist. Praise the Lord. Thank you. I want to, where you stopped, in fact, you, you, you said what was in my heart, where you stopped, that in this commission, in this movement, you will not meet the true Christ. And if you meet any Christ at all, it's the Antichrist. See what I've highlighted on my screen. Can you see it on my screen, please? Yes, you can see it. Okay. So our text, the working text, is First John chapter 4, verses 1 to 8. Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirit whether they are of God. Because many false prophets, the mouth speak for those spirits are human beings, and those human beings are the false prophets. I've gone out into the world. By this you know 
the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is of God, and every spirit that does not confess that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is not of God. And this is the spirit of the Antichrist. This is where Brother Paul stopped. Now, in English, when we think of Antichrist, we think of against antibacteria, antifungi, antiparasite. But in Greek, it doesn't work like that in Greek. Anti means instead or in place. So in place of Christ, instead of Christ, or an impostor like the Pope. Pope is the vicar of Christ. Christo vicarious. vicarious. So it's an impostor. Okay. Now when you look at this Mondays, the hour has come to liberate the word from all the oppression of the devil through the preaching of the word of faith. And I'm sending you to undertake this task. This is Vicar. This is Christo Vicarious right there. He's acting in place of Christ. Because the text Baba and High read, for this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he may destroy the work of the devil. But this man said, no. A spirit told him he's the one that will lead the movement that will destroy the work of the devil. So substituting this man and the first John 3, 8 and first John 4 is vicar. This man is Pope, is a Pope. This is Christo Vicarious. It's, it's, it's imposing himself. So, which means if we go to the test John gave us, he failed the very first test, truth about Christ. He failed it. And then Brother Paul said, if you eventually think you met a Christ in that movement, you have met this one, this capital letter. This is the Christ you have met. So this is, we want to put these tools in everybody's, everyone's hand to know how to use the scriptures to, to test the lies of the devil. That's the meaning of discernment. Discernment is using God's truth to knock out Satan's lies. Discernment is not the celestial method of uh, a spirit touches me. <laughs> it's using scripture to compare scripture with scriptures and using that scripture to knock out Satan's lies. All right, next question, please. Um, brother, Brother Shala wants to speak. I thought okay. you were listening to us. Yes, I was. Yes. Right, sir. Yes, I I just want to draw people's attention to um, to an act of gross foolishness on the part of anybody who fall who fall for this issue for this evil. Somebody said he had a fish he had a visionary encounter for eighteen hours. And from there, he received a mandate. You, you are, you were not there when he was when he was having that missionary encounter. But you are now being invited to follow him and rest your hope for eternity on somebody's private encounter with a spirit that you do not know about. What I'm saying is for general application, because many people come around, they are not reading God's word as written in the Bible to our hearing. They are telling us the dream that they had, the vision that they had, and as if as if we are dumb fishes, they now put hooks in our nursery and begin to pull us to follow them. And we ourselves, we willingly submit. Giving the giving ourselves a false identity that God has given the word in his Bible. And he was now making new revelation to individuals. For anybody that is more than six years old, this is this this is an appeal from God. 
Because whoever is following anybody who said he received a fission, and from that fission, he's telling you things that you cannot find on the pages of the web, and you follow him, you are doing it at your own peril. Because you are actually, you, you are actually saying God is, is foolish. Because you are, you are following somebody to throw away what you have on the pages of the Bible in order to follow private dreams, private visions of an individual, whoever that individual is. I just want to say that before we move away, please. Thank you, sir. I, I, another thing I want Babas to and everyone to, uh, to also pay attention to is let me share this mandate again. Um, I want to say, God, let's focus on that. The source of spiritual truth. God told him. God told him. We want to look at that as well. Uh, in our text, it must point to Christ. Truth, it must oppose worldliness. It must point to the scriptures and it must oppose the truth. Okay. Let's put it this way. Hebrews. God, who at various times and in various ways spoke in time past to the fathers by the prophets, and as in these last days, spoken to us by his son, whom he, had, he has appointed heir of all things, through whom also he made the world. So the, the text says God has said what he has to say. But our man of God said God told him, Baba, please let's comment. Let's look at that. Oh, should we trust that God? Because this God is now, this God now is contradicting this one. This one says, the scripture says, God has said what he has to say. The mandate said, God forgot something for about 2,000 years, almost 1,900 and something years, and he just came up and uh, met someone at Ife, and, and uh, Ife, somewhere in Oshu State, Nigeria, and told him. But the scripture said, God has said what he has to say. But please, let's, let's comment on that. Um, if you don't mind, uh, let me just, uh, uh, you know, I, I actually had quoted that uh, scripture from the beginning that, uh, and uh, uh, the last about number one, you see the verse two of uh, the scripture we are reading, reading today, say by this you know the spirit of God, every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is the of God. No, let me quickly let people know that it's not when I, when I'm saying Jesus passes, that's, that's when I'm contradicting the word of God. Anytime I am speaking and contradicting the word of God, I'm actually saying the Christ, the Messiah that came the other time, or the Jesus that came the other time, it's not the Christ. It's not the Christ of God. That's the, let, let me tell you. Let's 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 put that one. So don't think that uh, one could call Jesus. No, 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 no. They are just naming name of Christ. No, 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 no. You see, in this case, you need to really first of all know that. So before I go to uh, uh, what our, our coordinator has said, so you need to understand that. Any time, any word, any word that is coming from your mouth contradicts what is in the Bible. For you must know that God's word, John 1 1, said God, Jesus is God's word. So anytime your word is either you are taking it outside by thing or you are contradicting what is in the scripture, you have not confessed God, Jesus. You may talk of Jesus and Jesus and Jesus. You, you have not confessed Jesus. So that's one. And the God who said, who has spoken for that last time in that Hebrew, and he said that everything that is being spoken by his son, 
is the only thing that we can look at. And now that God, another God now came. Take it. You have to be very, very careful. Our brother said, anybody who loves his soul, let me remind you. Uh, in, in I think in the book of uh, Mark, chapter 8 as well, uh, there was a, a warning from Jesus. This is in Matthew, it's in Mark. There was a warning from Jesus uh, concerning our soul. And you need to really, 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 really know uh, the meaning of what uh, Jesus said. I think it's in Mark chapter 8 or so. Uh, he, he, Mark chapter 8, or, uh, can, he said that, uh, what will you, will you say? You need to consider yourself. What will you have in exchange for yourself? So you cannot joke with the word of God. You cannot be presumptuous about the word of God. You can't. You have to be exact with the word of God. And when when John was saying, test every spirit, when he was saying that, the presumption or the actual thing is that if you are a believer, what is inside in you is the spirit of God. And that spirit of God will test that spirit that is speaking. So God that was speaking in that, man, in that mandate is not the God of the Bible. In the sense that what he has given, the mandate is given to our man contradict the final one that he has said. So like he forgot that he has given the mandate to Christ and he was not changing, bringing another Christ to us. So as far as the Bible is concerned, God will not come out of the Bible and be speaking extra beta. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Uh, okay. So I thought we were going to be doing uh, a, a statement and a video, but it, it seems we couldn't. No, we can. I thought we were going to be doing this statement and the video, but we can't even <laughs> leave this place. There's a lot to 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 look at, and uh, on this the hour has come. And yeah, why we wait for Brother John? Can any other person, you know, comment on, on this? Looking at our, are you back? You are still faint. You are still too faint, John. You are too faint. You are far away. Okay. Yeah. Why you wait? I remember what I wanted to ask now, Baba. I have to ask you. I have to ask you this question. Now, from all you've said, I understand all you've said. You've quoted several scriptures, Hebrews, First John, Matthew. But, Baba, we can't deny the results that is associated or attributed to this 18-hour vision. Has God not indicated himself? We can't deny. If you go to most countries in the world where there are Nigerians, you'll find this church fully packed both in Western countries and in Africa, in Asia. If you come to Nigeria, now Nigerian soil, this mandate has results. It has money, it has power, it has, and it's only for one individual. So a young person who was born 20 years ago can look at the mandate today and say, of a truth, God said it, God did it, and that's the result. Please. I'm confused. Help my confusion. Brother John, go ahead. <laughs> I do, brother Paul. 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 Okay, okay sir. What we? <laughs> this is what I always, I always say to people: the fact that something is popular and is generally acceptable doesn't mean me it is of God. If we are looking at the at the physical result, we will miss the point. The question we should be asking ourselves: 
how what can we see in terms of the spiritual fruit what kind of fruit uh is being are the people who are gathered in such places what kind of food do they bear spiritually because at the end of the day we must understand one thing the primary mandate and the primary reason why christ came and died is for us to repent from our sins and be saved so the question is at least people who are in this gathering are they being pointed to christ you see there's a danger in the so-called christianity we have today and the danger is that we have so many preachers who minimize sin and repentance from sin and obedience unto the word of jesus christ they promote the gospel of mammon, greed, and lust. That is why you have in such places, all they talk about is money, money, wealth, riches, influence, every form of worldliness. Little or nothing about Christ. You know, somebody was sharing, somebody was sharing with me in confidence uh you know uh about a, a a couple of months ago and this is an individual who who worked closely you know with the bishop when they first started the uh, covenant university well, he was he was one of the lecturers in that uh, you know in that uh, in that university he said you know that there was a day they were uh, you know the the man told them point blank that did he tell them that uh, God has called him to to preach anything else, or he said to you know about you know uh, uh, about making uh, people rich? So we need to understand what is the direction these people are being pointed to. Colossians three, made it very clear. Said we should set our affection on the things from above. Are these people are they being? Thought, are they being discipled to set their affection on the things from above or to focus on the things of the natural? Because at the end of the day, it doesn't matter whatever level or whatever uh, uh, natural wealth and riches and influence we have on this earth. If we die in our sin, if we die without encountering the true Christ, is for nothing. He doesn't say, what does it profit a man to gain the whole world and lose his soul? And that's exactly what these people are being pointed to, to gain the whole world. But in the process, they are all losing their soul because Christ and his spirit is not in, 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 you know, in, in, in that gathering. And that's the truth. Even before now, for a very long period of time, I always been telling people, even when I was pastoring, I tell people, I said, there's one Nigerian church I can never tell anybody to go to, and that's Winner's Chapel, because their preaching is so carnal, is so worldly, it has nothing. It has nothing to do with Christ. That's the way I see it. I may be wrong, but I believe, you know, sir. I'm not. Thank you, sir. Mommy, at least I hope. Go ahead, man. We have this crowd, and from what Babas have said, you have concluded that this man is vicar, vicarious, crystal vicarious. However, there are results. How do we just oppose that to? Please help my confusion. <laughs> okay, praise the Lord. You know, Second Corinthians 11, 14, and he said that no wonder for Satan himself transforms himself into an angel of light. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also transform themselves into ministers of righteousness whose end will be according to their works. And because we see that they, like Satan can transform himself into an angel of light, the same way all these people, and then, you know, the, uh, the Bible also said that at the, at the last day, he will say, we preach in your name, we do this in your name, he said, depart from me, you workers of iniquity, I do not know you. Because 
They are not. They are not Christian. They are not working for God. They just. They just magicians. And because even the soldier, the sorcerer, he was able to perform their some magic before the true word of God came. So one one should really be very careful. The main purpose of being a Christian is to be saved from our sins, to walk in righteousness, and our reward is not of this world. We are not outbound. Our focus, our affection should be heavenly. And anything that is making our affection to be here is not of the Lord. Thank you, sir. So what your conclusion is that all this all, all this doctrine had produced is a result that focuses man's attention to this side of eternity, which makes this man to fail the second test. Does it oppose worldliness? Uh, in 1989, God told him, get back to Nigeria, get down to Nigeria and, and make my people rich. God told him to make his people mm. rich. See, people were not being rich before 1989. By the way, we need to measure that richness. Who became rich? Him or the people? Okay, that's a discussion for another time. All right, any other person? Maybe Brother John or in this book, okay, go ahead. We have results. We have crowd. We have mm -hmm. population. Baba, Baba, I want to keep this going. Sister Peace, okay, you two will come ahead. Okay, Sister Peace, go ahead, Sister Peace. Thank you, sir. Well, uh, we thank God for the teachings. Uh, this is not, um, it's not strange, it's not new. I suppose uh, looking at uh, this other man down there in Africa, that's notorious occultist uh, called uh, Paul Oregon. I was um, I came across his message one time where he declared himself that um, he, God has called him and has given him the mantle of righteousness. He's the only one now to lead the entire church of uh, in this world. In fact, he went ahead to say that um, if he die now, that all his members will not make it to heaven. They won't be oh. able to go to heaven if he dies now. You know so. This was just like uh, I think it was it, Brother Paul or Brother John has said earlier. I never see that man as a pastor anyway. I just see him as a correct businessman. That's the way I see him. I don't see him as a pastor at all, at all. You know? Um, so that uh, notorious one as well, that is the way his own is even worse. He's the leader of uh, righteousness as, as far as righteousness is concerned. He's the, he's the leader in the entire world. If you don't go through him, there's no heaven for you. He has the key, he has the skill to look through him, and the wife has the skill to look or call him to look through, uh, see the book of uh, life. They tell you whose name is in the book and whose name has been removed. Um, he's the one accusing Kumi that Kumi should have handed over to him. But anyway, overall, if he die now, his members will never make it to heaven because he has gotten the key to bring them to heaven. So if he dies now, there's no heaven for anybody. That is his, uh, his message. So he's Who's all that person? Who's that person again? Uh, Paul Orica. Strange. Holiness Revival yes, Movement. Paul Orica. Sorry, Holiness Revival Movement. He based in Abuja. His own is completely, you will know yourself that the man is just um, suffering from delusion. You, you, you understand. Um, so that's a big time issue. Um, I used to ask them that I think he needs to see psychiatrists. His own is completely out of out of way, you know. So, but we thank God that in fact the enlightenment is 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 fast with a fast uh, fast pace. People are coming to know all these things. Um, God has sent me. God has sent me. There is a great awareness, believe it or not. This message here, we are not coming up here together in vain. Whether people argue online on their comments, I'm telling you, they are learning. They are learning. They are learning. And with a great uh, speed, you know, the pace is immense. So I really thank God for this uh, group. Um, it's a great eye opener because three, four, five years ago, before COVID, we are all sitting in their midst. We are clapping hands. We are jumping like those people now. But when I say it now, I say, God, I can't really believe that I was once like that. But thank God for deliverance, total deliverance. So no one can come now and bring all these things. You can check it out. You, I've had it from here. No, there's no God that called these people. They don't work with God. They don't hear from God. That is not the bottom line. God bless you. So in conclusion, uh, 
In conclusion, therefore, brothers and sisters, the God of the Bible will not tell you a voice in order for you to let me share this uh, these scriptures, Hebrews. The God of the Bible will not come down to your room the way it came down in this mandate. Can you see my screen, please? In the mandate, the God, this mm -hmm. God came down and told this man that the hour has come. But for you listening to us to know who is speaking, if he is a true God or not a true God, he will not come down. He has given you his words. He has given us the Bible. And in Hebrews 5, in Hebrews 5, towards the end, you just open your Bible to Hebrews 5, towards the end, verses 12. He said, for though, for though by this time, you ought to be teachers, you need someone to teach you again the first principle, principles of the oracles of God. And you have come to need milk and not solid food. Verses 13. For everyone who partake only of milk is unskilled in the word of righteousness, for is a babe. 14. But solid food belongs to those who are of full age, that is, those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to design both good and evil. Let me read that in NLT. NLT says, please give me a minute. This is very important. Uh, NLT. Maybe that will help someone to see better. NLT verses 14 says, but solid food belong to... No, no, no. no, no it's 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 I think you need to change it on top of that. Yeah, change it here. Okay. When I need to press this yes, sir. Then it should be there. Yeah. yeah. Uh, okay, solid food is for those who are mature, who through training have the skill to recognize the difference between right and wrong. Brothers and sisters, that is the meaning of discernment. It's not a frenzy or emotional uh, vibration. Discernment is the ability to be able to spot right and wrong as you look at God's word. So we've been sitting down with um, 1 John chapter 4. That's how a Christian should think. You pick the Bible, you read it, and you design the truth from what you have read. I mean, we have been, we've been fooled too. I was part of this mandate for a long time. We crammed it, we knew it, we put ourselves in the mandate. We were told to see yourself in the mandate. We ran with the mandate. <laughs> but the last thing we did was to check the Bible, to check the scriptures, to see if that mandate was true or not. We didn't, because we were consumed with what the mandate promised. The mandate promised to destroy the work of the devil. And what is the work of the devil? Poverty. Poverty was the work of the devil. So we wanted to conquer poverty. So we infused ourselves in the mandate and we were consumed with the mandate because we wanted poverty to come to an end. So, so many people listening to us today, if you fall victim for all these doctrines, it's because you yourself, in one way or the other, you are greedy. But our job here is to present the truth and leave the truth with you. It's not left to you to apply the truth that has been presented to you. For now, we're going to stop here because it's getting long. We will continue our test. We will bring test. I mean, we still have like more videos to test. We will do that. We will keep testing using the instrument of the scriptures. Thank you for joining us today. And uh, for those who are online, please continue to follow this channel. And if you have any question, there will be numbers on the screen. Reach out to uh, the elders. They are available to answer your question. Thank you.